Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Connor, and today I'm going to be continuing my 2020 reading wrap-ups. These are the videos where I do shorter, miniature reviews of all the most recent books that I've read. I've fallen behind again. I'm going to try to catch up now that we're stuck at home and we can't do a whole lot. Hopefully this is going to be a quicker video because I have done individual reviews for two of the books that I'm going to be talking about, so let's just get started. The eleventh thing that I read in 2020 is The Grass Harp and A Tree of Night and Other Stories by Truman Capote. I borrowed this from the library, so I listened to the audiobook, and the version of the library had both of these combined. I did an individual book review, so I will leave that up in the card symbol if you want to check it out. This is a bunch of stories all in one. The Grass Harp follows a group of characters who all escape to a tree, and they're like living in the tree and what happens with the town. The town is not happy about it. And all the other stories are about random other things like one person who's selling her dreams to master misery. So if you want to know my thoughts on any of the individual stories that's in this collection, I go through all of them in the individual review and I don't want to waste everyone's time. Like with most short story collections, or collections in general, I enjoyed some more than others. I gave the entire thing about three and a half stars because there were some that I really did not enjoy, there were some that I did enjoy, so just kind of in the middle. My favorites were all the ones that were a little bit more negative, so Master Misery was one that I really enjoyed, where the more positive ones I didn't enjoy as much. And my least favorite for sure was Headless Hawk or The Headless Hawk. I did not enjoy that one. <laughs> After that, I read The Infinite Noise by Lauren Shippen. This one follows a character named Caleb. At the beginning of the book, he is starting to have emotions overwhelm him. Even in situations where he wouldn't be feeling that emotion, he's starting to feel it. So basically, he's an empath, and he goes to a psychologist to try to control his new abilities. This is almost like urban fantasy light, where there are a group of people called atypicals, and they all have abilities that are atypical. Caleb ends up connecting with another boy named Adam because Adam's emotions drowned out other people's emotions so he can focus on Adam instead of being overwhelmed by everyone's emotions all the time. And so it's a bit of a romance situation between Caleb and Adam. I thought that this story had a lot of potential, but I didn't end up enjoying the execution as much. I thought that the romance between Caleb and Adam was actually really well done because it definitely could have been a situation where Caleb like imprints on Adam and then they're in love. It wasn't like that, Caleb definitely takes his time to figure out what he's feeling and how he feels about it, so I enjoyed that. I also thought that a lot of the smaller details were well done in this, like the feeling of sending a text and then having like anxiety about how the person's gonna read the text. Those were done well, so I enjoyed the small little moments. But this book also skips significant chunks of time, so there's time jumps in it, and so you miss a lot of what's happening behind the scenes. So I wish we had gotten some of that information, because you don't get as invested in the story without seeing the small moments between characters. And I also thought that a lot of the side characters were just there to interact with the main character, like they didn't have anything else going on besides interacting with Caleb. And I thought that a lot of the characters should have had other things happening. They should have had their own lives, their own goals and stuff like that. It shouldn't just be about Caleb. Side note, this is based off of a podcast which I have not listened to. I did go after finishing the book, listen to the first podcast episode that's titled Caleb. And I actually think that I liked the way that the podcast was done maybe a little bit better than the book because in the podcast it is just the audio recordings of her sessions with Caleb, the psychologist sessions with Caleb, and it made more sense that there would be time jumps because she only gets the information whenever Caleb comes to a session. So I'll leave a link down in the description to the podcast and you can check it out if you want to. And I think that because there was a podcast it forced this book to hit certain points quicker or in a certain order. So. I don't know. <laughs> I enjoyed it, like the, the core of the story, but I wish that we had gotten more small moments and that the characters had been a little bit better developed. I ended up giving this book like 2.75 stars, somewhere in there. I then read Barakamon Volume 3. This is a slice of life manga that follows this guy. He's a calligrapher, and at the beginning of the first volume, he has a bit of a breakdown and he goes to an island to kind of recenter himself and work on his calligraphy. When he gets to this island, the people that live on it start to get invested in him and he starts to get invested in these people and I love this so much so far. This one introduces a potential nemesis for the main character, so I was enjoying 
seeing that kind of develop. And I just love these characters so much. They're all so quirky and I love them. His nemesis is from the city and they come to visit. And I just really liked seeing these city boys have to adapt to life on an island and it was just really, really enjoyable. Definitely recommend. I gave this volume four stars just because I didn't enjoy it as much as the previous two, but I just still am loving this series so far. Someone commented on a previous video that they had just finished volume 17 or something like that and said the series gets better and better and better, so I'm pumped to continue. I then read Master of the Phantom Isle by Brandon Mould. This is the third book in the Dragon Watch series, which is the sequel series to the Fable Haven series. It's hard to talk about it without spoiling things because this is so far along in Brandon Mole's world, but this one is focused more on Seth because of the events that have been happening. I really enjoy Seth. I feel like he's such a good character for this one to have been about because he has so much room to grow still, even though we're this far along in the series. There were new locations that we got to explore in this one that I was really enjoying, filled with new creatures and different types of people. I really enjoyed this. I buddy read this with Shay from Shay Geeks Out, so I'll leave a link to her channel down below and you can check it out. But it was just a really fun, enjoyable reading experience about characters that I'm definitely very invested in. And I will for sure be reading on and seeing what happens to these characters next. I just really love this series for how much all of the characters are supportive of one another and all the difficulties that they have to face are really fun to see how they work through them. And it's just a fun romp of a time. I gave this book four stars. And the 15th thing that I read in 2020 is Fantastic Mr. Fox by Roald Dahl. This is the first book by Roald Dahl that I have ever read. I decided at the end of last year that I wanted to start making my way through Roald Dahl's books because I've never read any of them, so I'm doing a bit of a reading project now. I forgot to say that I read The Grass Harp also for a reading project. I'm trying to read all of Truman Capote's books, so I'll leave a link to my playlist for that, and you can check it out if you want to know any of my thoughts on Truman Capote's books, but I will soon have one for Roald Dahl, but there's only one video so far. This one follows Fantastic Mr. Fox. He is the father of four, I believe, young foxes, and at the beginning of the book he is stealing from these farmers to feed his family. The farmers decide that they are going to try to take down Fantastic Mr. Fox, and it's about them trying to outsmart each other, basically. <laughs> I enjoyed this one. I ended up watching the movie after reading the book, and in my review I talk about both, so check it out. But basically, I did enjoy this. I just wasn't as invested as I thought I was going to be. I did like the exploration of, like, man versus nature, and the humans are taking over all this land and are making it more difficult for them to survive. Another thing might be that I finished the book and then immediately jumped into watching the movie, and I kind of enjoyed the movie a little bit more. I liked some of the changes that were made. Because in the book, all of the female characters are damsels and need to be saved all the time. And in the movie, it's not like that. So again, I enjoyed the changes that were made in the movie, but I still enjoyed it. I will be continuing my Roald Dahl reading project at some point. I think the next one that I'm going to read is James and the Giant Peach, just because I have it on my nightstand over there. So look out for that when that comes out. Hey, buddy. Little update on Nook. He had surgery because he had a lump on his neck. Right, you can see his hair is shaved right there, uh, but it came back benign, so that was good. And now, now he's got some weird face stuff, so I'm trying to take care of that as well. So those are the next five things that I read in 2020. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below what you've been reading recently. How are you guys doing? I hope you all are staying safe. Anything else you want me to know, leave it down below and I will talk to you guys next time.